BF Day proudly presents Mr. M's Math Class. Hello, Seattle Public Schools, and welcome to Mr. M's Math Class. Um, I am Mr. Maldonado. I have been teaching at BF Day for the last four years, and I've actually been at Seattle Public Schools for uh, nine years. And um, I'm really, really honored to teach you today. And so we're going to get right to it. Our agenda today, we're going to talk about um, we talk about hundreds. So in the last video, you learned about tenths in both the area model and number line. So we're going to look at a very similar thing, but we're going to look at hundreds this time. And then we're going to play a new game called Block Out. If you've been to Summer Staircase, I'm sure you've played this game before. It's a really fun game. Um, and then after that, um, also in the last video, you looked at tenths, hundreds, thousands using base 10 blocks. You looked at grids, you looked at number lines, you looked at fractions. This time we're going to expand on that idea, haha, expand, and look at expanded form both in fractions and in decimals. So first thing we're going to do, um, like I said, is talk about hundreds. And so just be ready that I'm going to change the camera angle and you're going to see my hands and a piece of paper. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about today is trying to understand hundreds through an area model. And here I have an area model and I've shaded two strips here of this area model. Now, one of the things that I like to do is think about um, one of these grids as a dollar. So this is our, our whole. So this would be one dollar. And I'm sure in the last video, if you thought about this just as tenths, there are ten tenths in total in this one. Or if I was thinking about this as money, there are ten dimes in a dollar. And you can see here that I have two tenths um, shaded in. And so here I would write this as two tenths. And this would be the fraction form. And two tenths, I can also write this as a decimal. And here we have a decimal point, zero and two tenths. Now, um, I could also think about this as a um, as hundredths. So if I have two dimes, you can think about how many pennies do you have? And I can actually count them here. Each one of these squares inside would be a hundredth. And so if I have two tenths, I also have 20 hundredths. So these are actually equivalent. Now, the interesting thing about this is how would you write 20 cents? And I just put a zero here at the end and that doesn't actually change this number. It just, I would just write this, uh, I would say this as two tenths, and this is 20 hundredths, and these are equivalent. So let's look at another example. So let's say I have something like this. So here, I only have three hundredths shaded in. And I'm wondering, I, as you can tell, I don't have a dime, and so I can't write this out of, a des out of a fraction that has a 10 as a denominator. So this would have to be three hundredths. And if I only have three pennies out of a whole dollar, I would write that as zero and zero, three, or three hundredths. All right, let's look at another example. So I have both of these together. So if I have one whole and then a little bit more, how would I write this as a fraction? So here, this is one whole, and I can look at this one separately and I have one tenth plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 10 plus seven, 17 hundredths. So this would be one and 17 hundredths. I have a dollar and 17 cents. Now I write this as a decimal. One and 17 cents. Pretty straightforward. All right, so let's keep exploring um, hundreds, but this time instead of looking at it through area model, we're gonna look at a number line here. So I have uh, a number line that starts at zero and ends at five tenths. So we have one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, and then five tenths. Now in the last video, you might've seen um, that there are numbers within holes. But here there are actually numbers between tenths. And you might think about this again as money. Here I have a dime, 
20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents. So what's in between these? And so if I was to try to think about where would 17 hundredths be, what's well, more than 10 cents. So this is would be 10 cents. This is one tenth. And I can see here I have 100th, 200th, 300th, 400th, 500th, 600th, 700th, 800th, 900th, 100th. I can also rewrite this as 10 hundredths. So 17 would be just 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 hundredths. So I'm going to put a little dot there. And that's where 17 hundredths would be. And just to make it a little bit easier for all of us, I'm going to change these tenths into hundredths. And as I said before, putting that zero there doesn't change the number. Because um, as we as we talked about, two tenths is the same as 20 hundredths, or two dimes is the same as 20 cents. Um, let's see if we can find 32 hundredths. So 30 hundredths is there. And so 32 hundredths would be right there. Um, if I was to try to find three hundredths, I know that's less than ten hundredths. So one, two, three. And there we have three hundredths. Um, so this is how we find uh, decimals up to hundredths in a number line. All right, so we're going to take a break from uh, the lesson and learn a new game called Blockout. If you have been to Summer Staircase, um, I'm sure you've played this in the um, elementary upper grades. And so um, it's a pretty fun game. I'm going to read the directions really quickly. So it says, players take turns rolling two dice and drawing a rectangle on the game board with side lengths given by the two numbers they rolled. Now, if you don't have dice, there's actually a spinner in the packet that you'll get. Um, and you can just use that and spin that twice instead of rolling two dice. But I happen to have two dice in my house. It says, for example, if you rolled a three and a six, you would draw a three by six rectangle placed horizontally or vertically on the board. Your rectangle cannot intersect or be contained in any previously drawn rectangle. If you cannot add a rectangle to the board on your turn, pass the dice to the next player. If all players pass in a row, the game is over. So player one doesn't get too great of an advantage. Their first rectangle must be drawn in the corner. So player one always has to start here. After that, rectangles can be drawn in any spot. Players get a point for each square they've drawn a rectangle around. For example, a 3 by 4 rectangle is worth 12 points. Whoever boxes the most squares wins. So um, player 1 is going to be played by green. And player 2 will be played by blue. And um, I'm going to be playing against myself. So you'll just be hearing me talking to myself a little bit here. Uh, player 1 has got a 5 by 5. And as we said, player one has to start here. Two, three, four, five. And five times five is 25. And what's fun about this game is that if you don't know the fact, you can actually count how many squares there are in the array. And here I draw my, I write my equation. Five times five equals 25, and I get 25 points. All right, player two is blue. And they have a five by five times two. And player two is gonna put it here. And two times five is ten. I'm gonna write that equation here, and I get ten points. Alright, back to player one, and they got a five times one. And player one is just gonna put it right here. Write the equation down. Remember, an equation has to have an equal sign. And 25 plus 5 is 30. And so my score is now 30. All right, player 2. 2 by 3. And I'm going to make 2 by 3 fit here. And 2 times 3 equals 6. And 10 plus 6 is 16. So right now, green is winning by a significant amount. All right, green, player 1. A one by three. And one times three equals three. Three plus thirty is thirty-three. All right, blue's turn. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty good. Five times six. And I'm gonna make that fit here. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
and then one, two, three, four, five. Notice here that I counted the two side lengths of my array to help me out. And then five times six equals 30. And 30 plus 16 is 46. All right, player one, green. Five times two. And I'm gonna make it fit here. Three, four, five. Five times two is 10. And 10 plus 33 is 43. And who? Pretty close game, actually. Let's see. Two and two. It's a pretty small array, but I'm going to make it fit here. And two times two equals four. And four plus 46 is 50. Ooh, looks like green is actually making a bit of a comeback here. Uh, one times three, Make that fit here. And one times three again equals three, and three plus 43 is 46. All right, blue, two times two, let me make that fit here. And that is 54. And five times three, ooh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna make that fit here. Five times three is 15. And 15 plus 46 is 61. Ooh. Six times two. And I think I can make six times two fit here. Nope, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can make it fit here. Six times two. I'm running out of space, so getting big numbers at this point is actually not going to be very helpful. Six times two is 12. And 12 plus 54 is 66. Ooh. Five times four. There's nowhere for me to put five times four, so I have to skip my turn. Now the, the blue, five times four, and there's no way I can put five times four. So the game is over at this point. And blue team, blue player, uh, player two wins by uh, 66 to 61, and so they won by five points. So again, this game will be in your packet. It's a pretty fun game. Um, I would recommend putting, if you have a, a sheet to put this in, a protector sheet, you can play this again and again if you have some expo markers at home. Um, but pretty fun game. Thanks for playing. All right, so we're going to move into thinking about um, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths in expanded form, both by in fraction form and in decimal form. Now, before we do that, I really want to quickly talk about a couple things here. So let's say we had a number like this. And I want to talk a little bit about our place value system. So each place value here, this is the ones place. We have the tenths place, we have the hundredths place, and we have the thousandths place. Now, I'm sure some of us just memorize these things, but there's a really, really amazing thing that happens here. So this is the ones place. And if we move over, this three is actually worth 10 times less than this one. And so... Because it's 10 times less, less, we call it the tenths place. Right? It's, we had a little th there. Same thing if, you go, if I keep going down. So if I make this, this 3 is 10 times smaller than the previous place value. So this one is the hundred hundredths place. Notice that there's that th there. And then finally, if I make it 10 times smaller again, this is the thousandths place. And again, each one is 10 times smaller than the previous place. And um, if I went the other direction, hundredths are 10 times bigger than thousandths, tenths are 10 times bigger than hundredths, and ones place is 10 times bigger than the tenths place. So let's look at this expanded form thing. 
So if I had this number, I would say this 3 and 333 thousandths. And I would say that because I end in the thousandths place. So first I hear, I think about this 3. So I'm, we're going to look at decimals first. So I would uh, expand this by thinking about what is this in expanded form. And this would be 3 times 1 plus, and again, this is in the tenths place. So this would be 3 times 1 tenth. Plus, this was in the hundredths place, 3 times 1 hundredth. And then this is in the thousandths place, 3 times 1 thousandth. Now, I feel like it's a little bit clearer in fraction form, so I'm going to write this also in fraction form. So I start off with 3 times 1 again. Plus, this is in the tenths place, 3 times 1 tenth. Same thing as above. Plus... 3 times 1 hundredth, and finally 3 times 1 thousandth. All right, so let's look at another example. All right, so here's another example. So this is 6 and 107 thousandths. And again, this because it ends in thousands, that's what I have to finish saying. So I'm going to start by looking at decimals here. And I'm going to use the expanded form. So this 6 is in the ones place, so this would be 6 times 1. Plus, this one is in the tenths place, 6 times 1 tenth. Plus, now because there is a zero here, I can actually skip it. Now, some, some teachers like to write, for you to write zero times one hundredth. That's the same as leaving it blank. So I'm actually going to skip it because it's a zero. And I move to the seven, that's in the thousandths place. And that's seven times one thousandth. And that's in expanded form, in decimal. So I'm going to do it in fraction now. So 6 times 1 plus 6 times 1 tenth. And again, I skip that hundredth because there's a zero there. And then 7 times 1 thousandth. And if I were to do the opposite, if I had an expanded form, so let's say I had something like this. What would this be um, combined? So I'm thinking, well, I have four ones, I have six tenths, I have one hundredth, and I have eight thousandths. So I've put those together. I put that four in the ones place, decimal point, tenths place, hundredths place, and thousandths place. So this would be four and six hundred eighteen thousandths. All right, so before I go, I wanted to plug this book. It's called The Number Devil, A Mathematical Adventure. I know a lot of times we don't think about reading in math class, but this is a really, really, really great, fun book that teaches us a lot of different math concepts that are way beyond just elementary school in a really fun way, an accessible way. So I would recommend, highly recommend this book. Um, thank, thank you for joining me today in Mr. M's math class, and I hope to see you soon, and I hope you had fun um, doing those math uh, terms and activities with me. So uh, thanks so much and I'll see you next time.